Hey, welcome to my channel. Yesterday marked the six month anniversary of the PlayStation Plus Tears update in Japan, and it got me thinking about doing a quick video about how it's been going. I myself was already a subscriber of PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, so I've been automatically subscribed to the new premium tier since day one. I've always taken advantage of PlayStation Plus over the years, and I've amassed an insanely large collection of nearly 600 games at this point. I was also a big fan of PlayStation Now. I've tried streaming PS3 games a few times, and it was totally fine for me, but PlayStation Now was really exceptional when you were allowed to start downloading games. Anyways, moving on to the new relaunch of the service back in June. Basically, PS Plus as we knew it stayed the same as the Essential tier, whereas PlayStation Now was moved on top of it and split up into two more expensive tiers. The extra tier gives you access to what was the PlayStation Now downloadable catalog, while the premium tier allows for cloud streaming of not downloadable games and boasts additional access to retro titles and game trials. However, if you read the comments on PlayStation Plus posts on the PlayStation blog over the last few months, while there has been a lot of positive reception, the premium tier sounds like it's been very disappointing for most players, especially for those interested in the retro games catalog. The PS2 games that they've made available so far were already purchasable games or were already included in PS Now, and only three PSP games have been added to the service since launch. In October, the Classics catalog was basically a bunch of Yakuza uh, PS4 games, debatably classics but definitely not retro titles since their PS4 releases, and in that same month GTA Vice City Definitive Edition was part of the extra catalog, despite being way more of a retro game, so that just didn't really make much sense. Then in November they added several Ratchet & Clank games, but they were only available in PS3 cloud streaming form, so for a lot of users they basically got no retro games that month, because streaming games does not work great for a lot of people still. It's really sad because Ratchet & Clank is an active first party series celebrating its 20 anniversary, so these sorts of games should be top priority to bring forward to modern systems. And it's kind of a letdown that this is the format they decided to bring these games to us. Speaking of active first party series, in the wake of God of War Ragnarok, I also wanted to try playing the original God of War trilogy recently to get a better grasp of the overall series since I had never actually played them. But it turns out none of them are available on PS4 or PS5. For some reason only God of War 3 was brought forward in 2015. And the first two games and the PSP entries aren't even scary PS3 cell processor games, so there's really no reason for them not to be ported over as PS2 classics or PSP classics, or just remastered. I think it's really silly that I can't play God of War, which is PlayStation's flagship franchise right now, from beginning to end on their currently supported systems of choice. There shouldn't be any licensing red tape for these sorts of actual classics not to be on the service. The classics catalog for premium users has just continuously felt like a lot of squandered opportunities so far. And going back to the Ratchet & Clank games, I think it's worth mentioning that just over a year ago, Sony wanted to shut down the PS3 store, but here they are still relying on the system that they wanted to leave behind. In some ways, I wish that they did kill the PS3 and Vita stores because they might have been doing more to bring the unavailable catalog forward properly at this point. On the first we got new rumors about December's classic titles, and apparently they will be adding Star Wars Battlefront 2 as a retro title, but it's the PSP version. So while it's said to be a great game, the PS2 Battlefront 2 is a legendary game and could easily be a better choice, but from what I've read about this decision is that apparently Sony does not have a great PS2 emulator, which has definitely been true on PS4 in my experience. I recently played all the Jack games on PS4 Pro and they run terribly. Guess what I'm saying is that it seems like the extra tier is actually the better tier because the downloadable modern game Sony's been adding to the service at that level are just plain better than what's been added to the premium tier so far. So if you haven't already subscribed to a higher tier of PlayStation Plus, you can probably skip out on premium. But don't skip out on subscribing to my channel and liking this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new era of PlayStation Plus so far.